Hi, I'm Kim Campbell. Welcome to our Plant Pure Nation kitchen. If you're committed to going plant-based, the best way to begin is by setting up your kitchen and getting rid of all of your old ingredients that are not plant-based or not considered healthy and beginning with a new pantry list. In the Plant Pure Nation cookbook, we have a really thorough pantry list with a deep explanation of what all the ingredients are. Today I want to go over through a quick pantry list with you and so you can visually see in the video what the items are and how to get started. Let's begin. First category are grains. There are a lot of grains. This is a big category so I tried to narrow it down to some items that I use commonly in my cookbook and that are great to get started with but just remember Experiment, try a lot of different grains and keep it whole grain. There's a lot of different pastas you can choose from, but you want to make sure that they're whole grain pastas. There's two ways you can use, buy beans. You can buy them dried, which they're less expensive dried. There's more variety. You can get them organically very easily, or you can buy them canned. The advantage of dried is that you're not getting the sodium. The disadvantage is it takes a little longer to cook, so you have to plan ahead. Nuts and seeds are really important for a lot of recipes because they add depth and creaminess to sauces and casseroles. I just want to say that when you're using nuts and seeds, be cautious not to overuse them because they are a high fat plant food. They do add enhance a recipe, but just be cautious about not using too much of them. Keep them refrigerated because nuts and seeds can go rancid. This next category are the condiments. I start out with using vegetable broth, a low sodium. I use this to saute a lot of my vegetables in. I have a variety of vinegars, lemon and lime juice. These help to reduce the salt that's needed in a recipe. They add flavor. Mustards, ketchup, Worcester sauce, which does not have anchovies in it, a sriracha, and some really beautiful curry sauces put out by Thai Kitchen and ginger paste. Spices are wonderful for most recipes. We usually use one or two of them. They can be expensive, so when you're building your spice rack, keep in mind that you can buy them in bulk, which is a little less expensive. You can get them on sale, you can buy them organically, but I strongly recommend that you have a base to start with, so I tried to come up with some of the more common spices. Nutritional yeast flakes is not considered a spice, but it does add a lot of flavor to recipes. It adds a lot of cheesy flavor, so you'll find that they use it in a lot of plant-based cookbooks. It comes in flakes, and I tend to buy it in the bulk section. This next category is the milk category. I chose soy milk and almond milk because those are the milks that you find most commonly in a mainstream grocery store. Coconut milk I use for cooking, with stews and casseroles because it adds a little bit of creaminess and a really strong flavor. I get the light brand. And then tofu and tempeh you usually can find in the produce section of your grocery store. This next category is the salt category. Make sure you salt in the end and salt very slowly. You don't want to add added sodium to your recipe. Some of the ways you can season a recipe or salt it is by using soy sauce or tamari sauce if you get the low sodium version. Miso paste, which is fermented soybeans, that adds a lot of depth and flavor, and just plain sea salt. Use it to a minimum. Some alternatives to white cane sugar are a variety of sugars on the market, going from maple syrup all the way to sucanat. There are a variety to choose from. So having your pantry stocked makes cooking easy and fun. So enjoy the process and eat well.